In this video, let's go all the way from 18,000 stocks to sit through down to less than 100. And when you try it for yourself, you can do it in less than 60 seconds. If you trade indicators or using price action, the screener can save you a ton of time. To get started, click the stock screener in the bottom left. There are some preset filters. For example, if you're a breakout trader, you may be interested if a stock is at a 52 week high, a new monthly high, the most volatile or overbought stocks. We're gonna start from scratch and I'll show you what I recommend. The applied time frame can be anywhere from the monthly down to the one minute candle. For an overall trend, I'd either turn to the four hour or the daily. Click on filters on the right and the first tab you wanna look at are the descriptives. I'm not interested in trading pink sheets or over the counter. Click on exchange and we only want NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange. We've already eliminated over half the junk. In terms of market cap, I found mid caps to be the sweet spot. The price action is much better than most small caps while at the same time having more growth in larger moves than the large caps. It's up to you if you want to include small caps, but I set a minimum market cap of 2 billion. Over the last 10 days, I want to see an average volume of 1 million. Anything under $5 is considered a penny stock, so I want to filter these out. Already less than a thousand matches. Moving over to the financials tab, I understand if a company lost a little money, but I don't want to get involved in a disaster. Net income has to be at least negative 50 million, and the same for gross profit. 615 matches now. This is obviously an uptrend, but applying the 5 EMA, we can see this isn't very useful. Look how often it switches above, below, above, below, all the way up. Let's take off the EMA and apply both a 50 and 100 period simple moving average. The 100 SMA is great for an overall picture, or you could also use the 50 SMA if you want to avoid a few more of the retracements. Going back to filters, we only want to see when price is above the 50 SMA. Or said another way, the 50 simple moving average is below price. This takes us to 245 matches. The SMA is a bit of a lag, so let's overlay the PSAR, which can help filter out more of the trades we don't want to take. So for instance, price is above the average, but since the dots are above the price, it won't show up in the filter, and we'd avoid these areas of consolidation. Load the filters again, scroll down, and set the parabolic SAR to below price. Now we're at 215 matches. At this point, you could start clicking through the symbols and see if anything catches your eye. Here, we're close to support. We could set an alert and add it to the red watch list. I know there are a lot of traders who use indicators for confirmation. I personally don't use SuperTrend or DPO, but let's say for the sake of argument, your system only allows you to go long when DPO is above zero and super trend is green. In a matter of a few seconds, you can click through each symbol and quickly put the ones that qualify on a watch list. Another indicator that may be helpful for filtering is MACD. All we need is the blue MACD and orange signal lines. As I scroll through, you'll see that when price is going up, the blue line is above the orange. Here you'll notice the blue line is under, right about the same time price stalled into consolidation. Price moves higher in sync with the blue line also moving higher. The blue line was above the orange for the majority of the final push up. And also notice the blue line was below the orange for the move lower. Knowing this, we want to go back into our filters and apply this to the settings. Scrolling down onto the technical tab, we want the MACD signal below the MACD level. We're right at 200 stocks left now. Let's apply a couple more types of moving averages. Find the Ichimoku conversion line and have it set to below price. Before we used the 50 simple moving average. Now let's also filter when the 100 EMA is below price. 169 matches. We can also use RSI to help us avoid stocks that are massively overbought. Set RSI to below 75. All right, we did it. 
We started with over 16,000 stocks, and now we're at less than 100. There are traders who only use support and resistance in price action, but you can still use a screener. Let me show you how. Let's clear the technicals and look for pattern. We're still on the daily time frame, but you can drop down to the four hour, the one hour, or whatever time frame you trade. And these candlestick patterns will be for that period. Let's select a few that might be interesting. Bullish engulfing, Harami, Hammer, Long Lower Shadow, Marabazoo White, Morningstar, Three White Soldiers, and TriStar. And we have 40 matches. At this point, I quickly click through everything, looking at price action as well as support and resistance that interest me, setting alerts, and put them on my watch list. As I've talked about before, you can't take candle six in isolation. They only become tradable signals when they happen in a certain zone. In the previous video, I went over everything you need to know about support and resistance, how to identify the zones and set up your trades. We also went over a couple indicators that automatically draw on the lines. If you missed that video, click here. Let's see if any of these price action results match up with support and resistance. Now, you don't actually have to draw all the lines yourself. If you want a shortcut, you can add an indicator called support and resistance. As I mentioned in the other video, I'd rather use support resistance dynamic version two, but this is great for a quick and dirty look. I like the look of Black Knight, third time pushing away from this level. If we get a little pullback, I'd consider going long. Stop below the low and getting two to one. Here on Calm, the bottom of the range could be at 52, but last few candles look like something I'd stay away from. The bottom fell out for Chegg back in May, but for one reason or another, it slammed on the brakes when it hit 15. Pushed up, gapped back down a couple times, but skidded to a halt again right here at $15. I wouldn't hate taking a shot and seeing if we can fill in the gap. Getting over three to one only has to be right 25% of the time to make money. CNI, the filter isn't wrong. We asked for a hammer and that's what this is, but obviously it's not relevant as an inside bar. Not to mention lower lows and lower highs. If the hammer were towards the bottom of the range around here, I might be interested, but we can move on. Same idea on CubeSmart. We get a hammer, but more towards resistance than support. Doximity. I'd set an alert when it hits the gap and add it to the watch list if I wanted to keep an eye on it. Duke Energy. Getting a higher low, few strong green candles, what if we set a buy limit around a 50% pullback? I made a previous video about using an ABC extension as a profit target. If you missed that video, click in the top right now. Dexcom looks fairly indecisive. I know we filtered looking for longs, but this could potentially be a short. I have a video on how shorting works if you want to check it out up here. Potentially another short on FND. I guess I'm, now I'm in the shorting mood because Juniper looks weak to me. In this video, we've gone from 16,000 stocks down to 100 with the filters, and now we have a little more than a dozen on the watch list. And you can do it in less than five minutes before a trading session. A couple other nice things about the screener. You can hit the refresh button here to rerun the search, or it can be automatically updated for you. Your imagination is the limit when it comes to the scanner. If you'd like to focus on a sector or a particular industry, you can do that right here. Searching for gap, you can find stocks that either jumped pre-market or intraday. If you want a quick pop, maybe you can look at all the companies with earning reports coming out soon. The screener can give you all the stocks that have changed a percentage on whatever time frame you want. I showed you how to combine a moving average with the PSAR and MACD. Of course, there are so many more indicators you can play around with. The thing to keep in mind about the scanner is it's not a crystal ball. And I'll give you suggestions, but you still have to take five minutes. Put your own human filter on it. Out of 
everything trading related. For me personally, finding good stocks to trade, that's the easy part. Where most people get tripped up is managing the stop loss, locking in profits. Going on a deeper level, if I were coaching someone who was a losing or break-even trader, I'd have them spend 5% of their time finding good stocks to trade and 50% of their time focus on risk management and psychology. It's that important. Poor risk management is the number one reason why people continue to struggle. It's not even close. If you're serious about taking your trading to the next level, click the video here and I'll talk to you soon.